What's up everyone, welcome to today's video and today we're going to talk about VR. Now, to be more specific, we're talking about the DK2 kit from Oculus and basically in this video I'm going to explain why I've got this headset, how I came about it, also how to set this up with the slight changes that are coming to Oculus's runtime software how to get Steam VR up and running, and also I'll give you a little demo on, a, on Dirt Rally using the headset, obviously recording the gameplay, and at the end of the video, I'll explain my thoughts, how I feel about VR going forward, and yeah. So if you wanna see all of this, hit that subscribe button, and give me a thumbs up, and let me know what you think about the video. Now to get started, the headset I'm going to be using is the DK2 from Oculus. It is the pro, the second prototype for the Oculus Rift, and yeah, it's it's given me an insight into VR, how it works, what it's like to wear, whether to see if I'm going to throw up everywhere or not. Which I'm glad to say, I am fortunate enough not to get motion sickness. So basically. The Oculus Rift, it's, I think it's the 6th of December, it's available over here in the UK, so it's a couple of weeks away, and basically the price of it, it's around about £550 upwards. Now, the other day I was down a local shopping centre and a trading shop over here in the UK called CEX actually had this kit in the window. Now. Basically, it's second hand, it's a second hand shop. People go in, trade things for money, and obviously they sell it on at a price, make a profit, all good. Now, the main thing that got me to buy this for £235 over one that costs 180 off eBay or something, CEX offer a 24 month warranty. So for two years, this prototype headset it's under warranty, you know? And I dare say when the, the full Oculus comes out, there's gonna be plenty of these kicking about in CEX's stores. So basically two years warranty on a prototype part, you can't really fall off. It's, uh, it's less than a quarter of the price of the end product. So as an introduction to VR, it was a no brainer. I just had to grab it off the shelf. So yeah, so that's, how I've got the headset. Now, the headset itself, it's bulky. It's a little bit on the heavy side, especially when my girlfriend's little nephew was around, he's about eight year old, he tried it out, he loved it, but it was a bit bulky for him and things like that. So hopefully the consumer version will be a lot lighter, lightweight, more smooth. I know it's got the added head headphones and things like that, but Hopefully that's a bit better. Now with it being so close to the release of the consumer version, basically Oculus has changed all its software, changed its runtime, things like that. So basically to set the DK2 up at the current software level, what you need is, and I'll put the links in the description below, so make sure you check them out. So the first step is have a look at the quick start guide. Mine didn't come with one, so quick search online, and I'll put the link in the description, the quick start guide, how to plug it all in. This, this DK2 kit, there's USB wires, there's the HDMI connector, there's the little Oculus sensor on top of my monitor there, there's a lot of wiring, power brick, you need to power it all, and so yeah, so the quick start guide, down in the description below, will give you the fundamentals of plugging it in. Now, step two, what you need is the Oculus software. Now, you will come across messages as you install it, as you set it up, it will say DK2 is not supported. Just click skip, just skip everything because it's now designed to set up the consumer version one, CV1. I can tell you now, DK2 works. Forget about all the warnings that flashes up, just 
click them off, hit skip, hit skip on the setup section for the new Oculus, it will run. Now, the third thing to do after you've got the Oculus software installed and up and running is basically at the minute, Steam VR is your friend. It's really, really easy to install. It sets itself away, it detects your headset. Yeah, so you go, go on to Steam, I'm sure a lot of you have got it, and install Steam VR, and then you're away. Now, I'm not gonna talk too much about the actual headset itself, but because there's many videos out there of unboxing it, giving it a quick overview and things like that. So basically, you've got the headset itself, you've got the wire going over the top, you've got adjustable straps, bit of Velcro to adjust everything. And the second main important part is the sensor on top of my monitor now. So basically I'm all set up and yeah, I'm gonna run a little demo and dirt rally right now. I'm gonna put the headset on and I'm gonna show you guys my point of view. And yeah, but what I will say now is the demos on YouTube and various other things do not they don't even like explain how realistic it all looks. Basically, playing dirt rally, when you look up and you see the roll cage inside the car, that roll cage is sticking out at you. It's totally 3D. The recording I'm, I'm obviously gonna show you and the majority of the recordings out there are just 2D. So basically, it's 3D on your heads. It's not a 2D picture and it's absolutely unreal. So. Basically, I played another game, I tried this on another game the other day, and it was Project Cars, and I had a crash, and probably the best thing I've ever done was stick my head out the window to look at the wheel and inspect the damage. That level of realism is absolutely amazing. So, the only gripe I've got with it is the resolution of this one, which, you know, it's like, it's like a full HD panel, but because it's like there on your face, you see pixels. The consumer version has got a shitload of more pixels, so maybe when the prices start coming down slightly, I will invest in the consumer version because I absolutely love this prototype. It's not amazing, it's not perfect, but the bottom line of trying to get the most out of your games is immersion, being in the game. With this, I'm in the car. You know, I'm in the room. So, without dragging it out too long, we're gonna jump in and see the gameplay footage that I've recorded, and yeah, hopefully, it comes across just how good of a experience this is for me. Okay, so as you can see, I'm looking pretty funky with these goggles on, and yeah, so at the minute, I'm in the menu screen, basically to me, I'm in a big sphere room, and the screen's just a panel in front of me, so what I'm going to do, do a quick custom event, um, we'll have a look at Rally, just pick a... Just quickly shot in some settings. Um, try and find a sunny event so you can, there we go. And we'll jump into the same as my road car, shall we? So I'm gonna be using the WRC spec Fiesta. So obviously in this loading screen, it's still a panel in front of me. This screen's still a like a panel in front of me and then when we actually jump into the car just do a quick set up for tarmac Five, okay so four, I'm not too three, bothered about doing any two, of the driving right now one go I'm not gonna go flat out but basically I'm moving my head about there's my co-driver next to me. Steering wheel, and look round it. Maybe have a look at the gloves I've got, get close up on my gear stick. 
I can check my mirrors, look out the window, things like that. Obviously the the full car isn't in this, so when I look turn around and look out the back, you can see Eight, there's six, no car there. So I'm looking out the window. Turn right three half long, don't cut. 60 crest. Caution, turn right one. Now obviously the realistic right side of this is I'm looking at the corner. I'm going around the corner, turn I'm looking at the one, apex. Cut. I can see where I want to be. Crest. And caution, I can see turn the blocks. The Q right through dip, don't cut. Care right four half long. Immediate turn square left, don't cut. Left six. And turn right five, don't cut. 130. Turn hairpin left, don't cut. 60. Crest. Right one, don't cut. 100 through dip. Keep left over crest past junction 80. Caution right four long, immediate square left, don't cut. Keep in, rocks on exit. 80. Turn left three, 80 past junction, 100. Keep left over crest. Right five continues for 100. Caution, keep left, into turn right one, don't cut. 60 through dip. Now crashed. Into right five long. So as you cut. can see, into turn the movement of your opens one hundred. Crest three hundred through dip. Care turn square left. Don't cut down. Eighty. Turn right one, don't cut, narrows, into crest. Left six, 80, dip. Care, turn left one, 80. Crest. Pass junction, crest. And caution, deceptive, immediate turn left one, gate on exit. 100. And I've crashed. So, yeah, as you can see, right 680. Get the feel of VR, everything's in 3D, including the roll cage above me. You know, the steering wheel, I can look at this, this little store thing sticking off. Now, if I change my view, one second. Ah, can't change. Turn left one, don't cut. 100 through dip, past junction. Care crest, immediate turn, open heaven right, don't cut. 80. So as you can see, it's gonna take some getting used to. I'm not the best driver in the world, so. But I think we'll leave it there. That's just a quick video for you to look at. And yeah. Okay, so there you have it. That was a really, I wasn't playing the game too seriously, but it, I've demonstrated what I see. As my movements of my neck, my head, I'm looking over my shoulder out the window, I'm looking over my shoulder at the core driver. It's ultra realistic. And this technology can only get better. Obviously, you've got smartphones out there now in the shop in the near future coming out with 4k displays on the smartphone so with the consumer version of the oculus rift and things like that in the future it might take one or two generations but it's gonna look razor sharp the picture the pixel issue is just a development thing you know it's not a major major issue i can live with it on this i know it's a development kit and yeah until i drop the money down and get the full Monty one, you know, I'm gonna have that issue, which, you know, I'm not gonna whinge about. It's a development thing. It's a, it's gonna be a generational jump. Now, motion sickness. What I am going to say is a friend of mine tried this headset. I shot him on a roller coaster. I told him to stand up. I didn't record it, but you know, 
he would have killed me if I did record it. And yeah, let's just say there's a permanent sick bucket in my room now, in my computer room. So expect a new setup to uh, come and soon featuring the sick bucket. But what I'm gonna say is this 200 pound product, for me, it is just as good as my, at the time, 900 pound monitor. It is something that is given all, my car racing games especially, I love them, you know, Project Cars, Dirt Rally, I hope, I really hope, Formula One 2016, or even next year's Formula One has Oculus support. I hope it does, because at the minute, it hasn't. Now, obviously at the minute, Oculus is not officially out in the UK, so, but my thoughts on it all, the future's brilliant. Virtual reality is gonna be an absolute game changer. And the fact that PlayStation have done their version on the PlayStation VR, basically, we all know the console versus PC battle, but I seriously think the PlayStation is a slight step ahead. It's released it nice and early for Christmas. It's sold out here in the UK. Obviously you can get one online for twice the price, which, you know, which is wrong in my eyes, but everyone's out there to make money, aren't they? And basically, as the generations will go, VR is just gonna be immense. I mean, in the future, you never know, Call of Duty might become good and it might become VR. Now imagine all the running about you're gonna do in your living room, running into the wall because you're getting shot at. That's gonna be probably the funniest thing on YouTube. But, so what I'm gonna leave it with is VR, I hugely recommend it. If you can get hold of one of these development kits for a couple hundred pounds, Obviously, I'm lucky, I'm fortunate. I've got one with two years warranty. If you're not ready to shell out for the full Oculus Rift, the consumer version, try a development kit too. I usually recommend it. It's, it obviously won't be as refined as the end product, the consumer one, but if you want an insight into it, try it. It's, my, it's one of the best things I've ever done gaming apart from actually building my own PC, building my own rig. This is probably the next best thing on it. So, yeah, so I wanna take this time and say thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget to subscribe and hopefully I'll be bringing more content to you guys like this and yeah, I've got a lot of plans in the new year for my PC and just to give you a bit of a, a hint, bit of a clue, sorry, I'm looking at water cooling, custom loop. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next gameplay video properly. So thank you for watching.